Thomas Venizio, and uh, I want to thank Kurt and Carla for making all this happen and for facilitating dreams. Thank you. Um, I took the easy way out here, kind of, um, and then I just set up my rig. Uh, this is what I'll be using for the performance on Sunday. And uh, one of my instruments is a Bukla 200E, which is a pretty incredible modular synthesizer. Um, I guess Don Bukla wouldn't appreciate that term synthesizer, but I really don't know what else to call it. Um, it's a simple patch we have going here. Uh, just a couple of oscillators and we're going to surround. One of the beautiful things about the 200E is that it outputs a quadraphonic sound. And uh, so one of my goals is to capture, I'm really into looping environments and improvisation and kind of capturing what I'm playing live. But I don't really want to be bothered too much with capturing all this. So I want it to kind of happen behind the scenes. I want a lot of the processes to be automated. And one of the things that I've grown fond of through the years is what I call texture looping. Um, pretty much all the loopers out there commercially available are based on rhythm. And that's fine and good. Um, but for me, I work at, you know, with abstract sound and texture. And I want to be able to capture a loop that doesn't necessarily have a beginning or an end. Um, so one way that I've been able to facilitate a textural loop is just through delay lines. And I'm using quadraphonic delays to capture the output of the uh, instrument. But um, what's cool, um, instead of dictating delay lines as I'm going, I just have a bunch of delay lines that are waiting for input. They're just sitting there in the background. And um, when I trigger an input, say if I have a 40 second delay, uh, my input is, is triggered, it is, is based on a triangle wave that's double the delay length. So if I have a 40 second delay, I'll have an 80 second triangle wave that slowly ramps up and ramps down whatever I'm feeding into this system. And what's pretty cool is I can capture loops deftly, as I, as I say. I don't have to hear these loops, but I'll have the confidence that they're going to sound pretty good. For example, well, I should say that uh, the system, every control pretty much in this patch, uh, or this, this multi-grid, is, uh, is, is under MIDI control. So I have the ability to make decisions live as I'm playing. So I'm bringing up, I, I, I killed the... Uh, input sound, we're not hearing this, but everything is set up in a pre-fader um, capacity. So simply to capture a loop, I just have to hit one button. And I have this loop up right now, well, I guess we can't see it on the screen, but um, uh, we'll eventually hear this loop populate. Right now it's being filled by the triangle wave, we don't really hear anything, but eventually we're going to start to hear a fade in and uh, then the loop will come into uh, our audio domain. There we go. And uh, so that's kind of reassuring to me as a performer that I can grab something that's going to sound pretty cool. It's just going to be seamless um, from beginning to end. And once something's captured,
output of everything to a, to a, a sphere of the pan, which is pretty nice. So I can take what I've captured in quad and repurpose it now and process it in different ways. Um, and there are three kind of spatial patches that I can toggle between. Another is just a, a tremolo. So now there's a tremolo on four different speakers and it gives you another quadraphonic effect. And another is a polar pan, which is more of a manual control. Although you can turn off, you can essentially turn off friction on the lemur and uh, get into an empty gravity space, which is kind of like an LFO as well. So here's our, our polar pan.